Oh, my word. Yep, that's an empty grave, all right. I can't believe it. Ah! Ellen, you want to handle this? Go away. All of you. Not until we find out what you're doing here. I've come back for what's mine. What are you talking about? Things in the grave. I've come back for them, that's all. There's a person buried here. No, it's not like that. The, the coffin wasn't for a person. What was it for, then? It's a place for safekeeping. I just can't get rid of you people, can I? I might as well show you. There was an immigrant family that came to this country sometime in the 1840s. They ended up here. When Oakdale was barely Oakdale. They tried to start a farm, but it failed. And they had to move on. But before they did, they buried their valuables. Why would they bury their valuables like that? I always bury my valuables. Makes perfect sense to me. It was an act of faith. You leave behind what you love, and you're bound to return to it. They hope to come back and try the farm again. But why make it look like a grave? So that no one would disturb it. Not even by accident. And they never made it back? No. But I did. I'm their great-grandson, Simon Laszlo. How did you know about this place? from a story that my parents and my grandparents always told. I decided to come back and see if there was any truth to it. I especially hope to find this. Do you play? I do. Mr. Laszlo, I'm Wanda Gilmore of the Oakdale Historical Society, and I hope you'll record this piece of Oakdale history for our archives. Yeah, now we have the real story of the no-name grave. Um, Mr. Laszlo, we're having a picnic in the park this afternoon. It's kind of an annual neighborhood event. Would you please come and be our guest? All right. Great. <laughs> so the treasure has been retrieved. Tom Sawyer found some treasure, too. Tom got himself and Becky home safe. Crazy Joe wasn't so lucky. Good afternoon, Miss Polly. Judge Thatcher, good afternoon. Tom? I've come to tell you not to worry anymore about Crazy Joe coming after you. We found him dead in the cave. Reckon he had it coming to him. Mm hmm. Won't you come in for a minute, Judge? Well, thank you. I believe I will. I've got some unfinished business in that cave. Huck! Huck Finn! I know where the treasure is. What? Huck, it's in the cave. Are you sure? I know it. This is it, Huck. This is it. This is where I saw him. It's a number two spot, Huck. Marked by a cross. Remember? Help me dig. Chuck, we're rich!
Listen, everyone, I have an announcement to make. As we all know, young Tom Sawyer and young Huckleberry Finn are now the richest people in town. <laughs> now, Tom here has his Aunt Polly to guide him on the path that he should go. But Huck has no one. So, Widow Douglas here has decided to give Huck a proper home and teach him how to be respectable. So, Huckleberry Finn, welcome to your new life. <laughs> After a few weeks of living a respectable life, Huck couldn't take it anymore. He disappeared from town, and no one could find him, except for Tom, who knew where to look. Huck? Huckleberry Finn, I know you're in there. Now you come out and show yourself. I won't be rich. I won't live in them smothery houses. I like these barrels just fine. Blame it all. We were just having fun. And this foolishness had to spoil it all. Now we can't play robbers or do anything fun. Look at here, Huck Finn. Being rich ain't gonna keep me from turning robber. You mean it, Tom. You mean we ain't done with our adventures. Never. Just come on back to town with me, okay? When do we turn robbers? Well, we start tonight at midnight, of course. We'll call ourselves the Tom Sawyer's Gang. Why not the Huck Finn Gang? This is where the story of Tom Sawyer leaves off. It doesn't really end. It just stops for a while until the next story begins. It's time for the Wishbone Floor Show. I'm gonna clean up at this picnic. Hi, Sam. Look it. Down here. Cute little dog. Yoo Look, Dad, it's Wishbone. When the cute angle fails, you go for the gill. <laughs> oh, look. I'm just a little hungry dog, and you're the big human hogging all the food. You need something, too, don't you? Mmm. <gasps> 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 Oh, yeah. Works every time. Ah. David's family. I'll try the casual approach. I'll pretend I'm fascinated with the grass. Hey, Wishbone, come here. Uh, who? Me? Are you talking to me? Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm not really hungry or anything. I just stopped by to say hi. So let's give Wishbone a taste of this. Very tasty. I think he likes it. <laughs> Emily, go easy. Don't pull on Wishbone's tail like you did the other day. Nice, doggy. Nice, Emily. No sudden moves, okay? Well, this has been lovely, but I gotta go. Oh, thank you. And now for a real challenge. This is picnic technique number three, Shameless stealing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Pineapple upside down. That was lovely. Thank you. Wishbone, where have you been? Uh, at the buffet table. Ooh, squeaky book. I can't leave this out in the open. I just better put this someplace safe. Come here. If I could have everyone's attention for a minute, welcome to this year's picnic. Every year, we ask someone to talk a little bit about the neighborhood. This year, it's my neighbor and dear friend, Ellen Talbot. Ellen? Wish me luck. Thank you, Nathan. Well, you all know me and my son, Joe, and our dog, Wishbone. I'm sure you've all fed him at least once today. <gasps> Who told her that? You know, on a day like this, I look around at all of you, and, and I see stories. And today we have a new neighborhood story. 
the real story of the no-name grave. It was a family legend that brought Mr. Laszlo to the no-name grave. And a ghost story brought my son and his friends there. And then my son's story brought me there. So different stories brought us all to the same place. That's what stories do. They bring us to the same place. And this neighborhood is, well, it's our place. It's just an ordinary neighborhood, but it's the home of our stories. You know, as Mark Twain said, there is no such thing as an uninteresting life. Such a thing as an impossibility. Beneath the dullest exterior, there is a drama, a comedy, a tragedy. like an ordinary dog with an ordinary flea. But beneath my fur, what's up? I've got a hundred stories. 